Hello everyone, my name is Claire Bevan and this is the World Poetry Café and the Family Tent. And this time I'm going to do poems all about animals and they're amazingly alphabetical too. And uh, but we'll start with a very quick animal alphabet. So here goes. Ant and budgie, cat and dog, elephant and frisky frog, goat and hippo, ibis, jay, kangaroo and lambs who play, mole and newt and owl and pig, queen bee, rhino, shark so big, tiger with his stripy tail, unicorn and vole and whale, x-ray fish and yak and you. Welcome to the poet's Zoo. <laughs> the zoo got in at the end there. Well, now, really, anybody who's going to do an animal alphabet has to begin with the animal that's got the most A, A start. And every dictionary you'll find him on the A, A start, and he's called the Aardvark. And if you don't know what an aardvark is, we've got a picture for you. So uh, here we are. Here's our wonderful aardvark. And as you can see, he's rather plump and he's rather pink. And he gets fat as that through eating ants. And if you look at his great long hooter nose, um, it's even more than it is really because a great big long tongue comes out that's all sticky. So <laughs> there you are, there's the aardvark. I'm very fond of them. So here we go with the aardvark. Aardvark, you are number one. You shelter from the burning sun in shady burrows all the day. And then at dusk, climb out to play no other hunter could be cuter. You hoover termites, they're big ants, you hoover termites with your hooter. You catch them with your sticky tongue until you're full of food. What fun! I'm rather glad you're number one. Hooray for the aardvark. Uh, pity for the ants, but never mind. And, and I've popped a couple of them in with an assembly of animals. And it goes like this. An army of ants who parade past the sink. A snuffle of aardvarks, excited and pink. A clatter of antelopes, off with a bound. A rabble of apes who are swinging around. A slither of adders who slide on the floor. A spiral of ammonites found on the shore. And a grumble of aunties who trumpet and roar. I hope your auntie isn't like that. And uh, right, so now we, we've got to get to B. And this is one of the very smallest little mammals I have ever seen. I found out about it in a big book and it's called the bumblebee bat. And no wonder it's called the bumblebee bat because it's as small as a bumblebee. And uh, I'm just going to show you the size of it. So here he is, that's the size of the bumblebee bat. But of course, when he's in his cave, hanging upside down, his legs are in the air. <laughs> and at night, out he flies. And he weighs the same as one little penny. So here we go with the bumblebee bat, who's very rare. Has anyone seen the bumblebee bat? Small as a spider, soft as a cat, rare as a panda, brave as a lark, dangling down in the whispering dark, a jewel to hide in a secretive cave for the world to lose or the world to save. Small as a beetle, soft as a rat. Has anyone seen the bumblebee bat? And he's still living in a country called Thailand. Right, well now we've had A, B, and now we're on to C. Um, 
you might think I'm cheating a little bit this because um, this one's about a kitten but then a kitten is a little cat so I'm standing by my little kitten and if any of you are sitting there and going oh no it's going to be a fluffy poem well you've never lived with a kitten so it goes like this Oh, I'm mad me, I don't care. I climb up the new curtains just because they're there. I sharpen my needles on the antique chair. I climb up anybody's trousers, claw, spike, tear. Eat grass to make myself sick. On the best carpet, the best bed, the kitchen table, anywhere, I don't care. And when they swear and scream, you naughty cat, don't you dare. I simply chase my wispy tail, I wash my delicate ears and stare up at the human giants with my innocent green eyes wide with despair. And they're caught in my snare and then I pull threads in their smart spent sweaters they wear and I chew their tangled hair and I climb the curtains again just because they're there I spin in midair and race everywhere and I don't care I'm mad me and some of you will know all about that and some of you have now been warned but but if you'd thought that I really was cheating with K for kitten. Okay, this one is a real proper one and it's about a clam. And a clam is a great big seashell. And it goes like this. He's got a very boring life. I am a clam. A clam's what I am. My life isn't thrilling or busy. But sometimes I ride on a wild winter tide and just for a treat I feel dizzy. <laughs> oh bless him, it's not much fun really is it? Uh, no, you don't, you don't really want to be a clam, so um, oh, now we've got ABC, we're on dogs, I love dogs and uh, they always make me smile and this one is called Charlie, I didn't know he was called Charlie until a little while ago and he lives in a house that I often go past and whenever anybody goes past he goes yap 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 and I thought he was going to be the tiniest dog in the world but actually he's got quite long legs but he's very dainty so this is for you Charlie yap ah yap to make the people pass your garden gate, your tufts of grass, and if a stranger taps your door, I yap and snap and yap some more. I'm called a pest, the neighbours frown, yet I'm the bravest dog in town. My tiny fangs are neat and bright, the salesman runs away in fright. My yap's more deadly than a gun. The postman groans, the bin men run. <clears throat> I am your sentry and your spy. You are the sunshine in my sky. I yap for you when you're away. I watch the window world all day. But here you are, my heart leaps high, I yap, yap, yap! <laughs> I don't know why. Oh. <laughs> and he always gives me a yap, and I always like to hear him. So right now, where are we now? Right, A, B, C, D, E. Ah, oh, now this one's got a strange title because it's called Hannibal. Now Hannibal was a Roman general and he thought it would be a great idea to take something a little bit strange over the mountains and that would frighten all the enemy away. So he chose elephants. So this is E for elephants and I think in my poem unfortunately Hannibal might have got his map upside down. Right, so it goes like this. Of course there wasn't a sat-nav in those days. Right, Hannibal. I, I, I'm sorry about the elephants. I'm sorry they drank your lake. I'm sorry they made a racket and kept your granny awake. I'm sorry they wrecked your cottage. I'm sorry about the mess. I'm sorry they scared your chickens. I feel for your distress. 
I'm sorry they ate your haystack, but we only stopped to say, um, have you seen a mountain? We seem to have lost our way. Oh, poor old chap. Uh, oh, now this one you want to look out. It, it's a bird. A nice little bird. No, a huge bird, a bad-tempered bird. And it's called the emu. And he's got a very nasty kick. Uh, with a lot of birds, you think you should be scared of the beak. But it's often those feet. And I always think this one is probably a teacher with a child she doesn't like very much. So it's called the emu. The emu has a hefty kick. Her temper's hot and rather quick. The sight of children makes her sick. And all because she cannot fly. So, if you want to make her cry, annoy the emu, dear. Goodbye. I wonder if that child managed to get on the coach back home. Oh dear. Right, A, B, C, D, E, F. Oh, we've got to have a frog because uh, I'm very fond of this one. I, you might just be able to hear the strange noise in it. We think it's a ball bearing rolling about, but he does sound like a jolly good frog. So, uh, right, you all know about frogs. The Frog Prince. There's just a small chance that the frog in your pond could be the prince who was bashed with a wand, could be the hero incredibly rich, cursed by the spells of a horrible witch. Oh, hark at him croaking. How can you walk by? His crown is so tiny, it's, it's making me cry. He's hopping away now. You don't want to miss him. There's just a small chance you'll be glad if you kiss him. I've never quite fancied kissing a frog. Uh, so I think we'll leave that one. So A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Ah, oh, the best ones that you go to when you go to a real zoo and you know giraffes are tall. But wow, every time you get there you think, but not that tall. They are wonderful. And um, this one's just for fun. But oh, I would really like, I would really like someone to invent a tiny, tiny giraffe that I could pop in my pocket and feed nice little bits of straw and treats to him when I go for a walk. Hasn't happened yet. The ideal pet. If you're seeking a pet, who is cheerful and yet, as far as I know, does not laugh, nor chatter, nor howl, nor trumpet, nor growl, then may I suggest a giraffe. He'll prune away thorns while enhancing your lawns with his grace and his spindly legs. He'll welcome your friends with his elegant bends and hang out your washing on pegs you'll fall for his style, his faraway smile, the patterns that dapple his calves. He'll walk on a lead and he's so cheap to feed, but he'll cost you a fortune in scarves. And if you've ever wondered what those two funny little bumps are on his head, they're called ossicles. So I, we, asked, we asked a very kind keeper once and he told us, Right, so where are we getting to now? Our A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. Oh, I like the hippo too. Um, I once had to write poems about dancing. I didn't know much about dancing and I, I'm not very good at it. So I thought I'd, I'd be a hippo in this one. And it's called a tutu. And if you don't know what a tutu is, it's that sticky out little frock that dancers wear. Tutu. Behold the hippo, shy and neat, satin slippers on her feet, twirling to a dreamy beat. Does her tutu seem too small? Does she sometimes trip and fall? Does her headdress slip at all? Oh, does it matter? There she goes, hopeful as a morning rose, spinning on her happy toes. 
and I'm sure the other hippos think she's very, very graceful. And in fact, truly, they are quite graceful when they're in the water. Oh, now, look, I think the boys will probably like this one because it's a little bit smelly. And, um, right, so where have we got to now? A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I. I is for insects. And this one isn't just an ordinary insect. It's a big boy. It's a beetle. It's called the dung beetle. And long ago in ancient Egypt, it became almost like a god. And uh, they like to have it fixed somewhere on the presence of the emperor or the pharaoh, sorry. So here we are. Here's a dung beetle. I am the insect gladiator born to be an excavator, a super beetle, tough and strong, rolling balls of dung along. Now, heaving wheat weights around the zoo may not seem much fun to you, <laughs> but as for me, it's just the thing to show the beetle world I'm king. So bring the trophy, carve my name on all the insect walls of fame. And human beings, if you're wise, be thankful that I'm not your size. I don't know, it might be quite fun to be rolled along by a great big dung beetle. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J. Ah, oh, the jellyfish. Um, he's another one a bit like the clam. He doesn't seem to have a very happy and exciting life and I, I felt a bit sorry for the jellyfish. So here we go with the jellyfish. Oh, pity the jellyfish. Squishy and small. The poor little chap has no pleasures at all. He's never seen camels or mountains or fleas or teachers with toothache or or knobbly knees. He's never heard hooters or lions that roar, or postmen who whistle and bang on the door. He's never smelt lemons or grass in the spring, or sausages fried with an onion ring. He's never munched apples or hot buttered toast, or chips from the chip shop, or grand's Sunday roast. He's never touched pythons or piglets or snow or fat furry hamsters or velvet. And so, please pity the jellyfish, squelchy and sad. Those stings on your skin were the best fun she's had. It's a bit naughty, wasn't it? Well, I hope, I hope it wears off. It does wear off. Um, they don't kill many people, I don't think. Right, I J K K. Ah, oh, um, we did that little thing where you can have a look at Chester Zoo, and we saw the Komodo dragons. Now the Komodo dragons don't breathe fire; they're real great big lizard things, and uh, they never clean their teeth. And if they bite you, you will die, but slowly. So if you ever go to visit a Komodo dragon, please don't be a goat. Uh, just be a very sensible person and stand well back. The Komodo dragon. He's got a big appetite. The Komodo dragon can eat a goat or a very small bear in its cuddly coat. A pangolin, that's a wonderful sort of one with little shells on him. A pangolin dressed in a suit of chain mail. A black and white skunk. Oh, oh terrible, if you don't count its tail. A furious swordfish, apart from the spike. A little old granny, complete with her bike. A pair of fat pythons, a trillion fleas. A flock of flamingos with pink pointy knees. A cloud of mosquitoes, a penguin or two. A keeper who works at the vanishing zoo. A herd of young hippos, a swarm of wild bees, and then he'll say, May I have pudding now, please? Don't ask him to tea. He's even worse than that tiger, isn't he? <laughs> right, now we began, we're nearly in the middle of the alphabet now, and when we began, we started with an animal, began with AA, and now we're right near the middle. We've got a llama with LL at the beginning. 
why it's got two L's, I don't know. Uh, but it makes it clear exactly what he is. So he's called the two L Llama. The two L Llamas, tall and fit, she chews the grass, then sits a bit. But when she's cross, look out, she'll spit. And I'm afraid to say that's absolutely true. <laughs> it's a very bad habit they've got. Um, right, so now, oh, I ate H-A-K-L-M-M. -M. Oh, gosh, I had a good lot of choices and I nearly did mice. But then I remembered a programme I saw on the television and it was a film about being in a jungle at night and the moon coming up and the stars and the moon moths began to fly. And the moon moths are so beautiful. When you look at them, the, the wing at the top is, is sort of an ordinary, very pale wing. But the lower one goes long and long and long, a bit like a leg, and right at the end, it's almost got a little toe. And so on both sides, it looks as though it's got legs and it's dancing and it catches the light of the moon. And this one has got some strange sounds in it and I hope that you'll have a go after, after I do one and you can join in the next time. So it goes like this. In a lost corner of the sleepy wood where stars paint golden circles on the tangled grass, a curtain of cobwebs swings back and the insect orchestra starts to play. Tsk, tsk, chee, chee, hmm. Now the moon moths begin their summer ballet. They spin and smart spiral among the leaves. They balance on beams of light and their pale tendrils tiptoe like satin shoes as the insect orchestra trills and buzzes. Tsk, tsk, chee, chee, hmm. Lines of silver midges form a glittering necklace as a solo bat swoops impossibly high, impossibly low, and the insect orchestra chirps and whines faster, faster, tsk, Chee, chee, hmm. Then the glowworms blink, the cobwebs fall, and all the moon moths whirl away until only the insect orchestra is left to sigh and remember and troop home. Tsk, tsk, chee, chee, hmm. I like reading that one. So I hope you joined in a little bit. Right, well now, you'd think, wouldn't you, the hardest letters would be X and Y and Q. But actually, I found N a bit difficult. So here we are on N, and it's called N is 4. And I'm going to give you a few little clues, because you might not know all of these. One I've, I've found was called a Nyala, and it's a very dainty sort of deer or antelope. It's very dainty, very sweet. A nematode, which is a rather grotty sort of worm thing, very, very small. A Nile crocodile, who insisted in coming in and saying, I'm not just a crocodile, I'm a Nile crocodile. And finally, a little creature called a numbat. And it's not a bat, it's actually like a wombat, but smaller. And it lives in Australia, looks a little bit like a raccoon or a squirrel. And it has one of those little pouches with a tiny baby in it. So, you'll sort of remember that, won't you? N is for Creatures listed under N are only mentioned now and then. The newt, of which I'm rather fond, lives secretly inside our pond. While toads called Natter Jack are rare. I I've searched our street. They are not there. The naked mole rat can't be found. It's, it's got really pink wrinkly skin, it's quite horrid. The naked mole rat can't be found because it's hiding underground. The shy Nyala, this is true, is sometimes spotted at the zoo. But nematodes are far too small for me to notice them at all. Which leaves me with a nanny goat, 
A narwhal, that's the one with the wonderful spike. A narwhal where the icebergs float. A numbat and a crocodile who claims his proper name is Nile. Plus Neverbird and Nightingale from Storybook and Fairy Tale. There may be other beasts I've missed, but that's the ending of my list. And of course the nightingale is a real bird that sings beautifully at night and likes people to sing along with him. Right, L-M-N-O. Oh, it's got to be the octopus. And I've got two whole poems about an octopus. Octopus one. If you're having trouble with your eight times table, make friends with an octopus as soon as you are able. Octopus two. When poor Mr Octopus curls up to doze, his tentacles tangle in, in knots and in bows. But which are his fingers and which are his toes? I wonder if poor Mr Octopus knows. <laughs> it must be very complicated working all those legs, mustn't it? Um, right now, oh, we've got we've got a little bit of a noise coming up, um, which is coming from this um, <laughs> very small penguin, <coughs> and that really does sound like a proper penguin. So keep that in mind. But when penguins are first born, they're quite fluffy and can't swim. But later on, of course, they get their grown-up feathers, which are very tight and are waterproof, and then they love the water. In they go except in this story and this is absolutely true um, it's a little zoo that we sometimes go to it's just a bird world really a bird sanctuary and um, one of their penguins when it was born it was frightened of water nobody quite knows why and um, I'm going to be the penguin I am a penguin who's twitchy and twimbly I'm frightened of watery stuff. I'm frankly not fond of a puddle or pond, though my friends say they can't get enough. My little legs quake at the edge of a lake. My flippers go into a flap. I'm simply not brave, so a ripple or wave can jangle my nerves till they snap. But one kindly keeper wades deeper and deeper, he shows me how diving is done. And hey, six months on, all my goosebumps have gone. I'm a swimmer, and water is fun. And that's really, really true. I and mean, we met the very kind keeper, and the penguin's name was Charlotte. Right, now, this is one that I'm sure you probably won't know. These are the cues. So here we are, yeah, we've got all the way up to Q now. O-P-Q. The title is The Quagga, and you'll never see a quagga apart in old books um, because the last one died in the 1800s. But the other two names that you're going to get is, one is a quail, which is a, quite a small little round bird, and the other one is a quetzal. And it's a very beautiful bird that comes from South America. So the quail and the quetzal and the quagga. The quagga. The quail and the quetzal, they joined a quick queue to question the crowds at the quizzical zoo. We're here on a quest to discover the fate of our quiet friend quagga, so lost and so late. The duck with the quill and the quiff was quite wheezy. Did Quagga seem squeamish or quirky or queasy? Did she fall down a quarry or quarrel or quake? Did she feast upon quiches or quarters of cake? Oh, the quail and the quetzal with quaint little quivers cried, Quagga's a quadruped, that means four legs. Quagga's a quadruped, rattled by rivers. She's frightened of quagmires and quicksands, of course. She's a bit like a zebra, a bit like a horse. Oh, you've used up your quota, snap duck with a quack. Your friend, like the dodo, will never come back. And then, as the quetzal and quail sadly blinked, she added, your quagga is simply extinct. Oh, how sad for them. But, but they're still going strong, so that's not so bad. Right, okay, so here we are now, OPQR. 
we've got the raptor rap, hooray! And uh, this is a mean and nasty one as well, we just had a bad-tempered duck and now we've got a raptor rap. And um, those of you who've watched Jurassic Park will know that even though they're quite small, the raptors, they gang together. So this is the raptor rap. I'm a speedy hunter, I'm a carnivore. I like my meat and I like it raw. Can you feel my breath? Can you see my claws? You'll be scared to death when I clash my jaws. I'll slice you up into little pieces. Share your bones with my nephews and nieces. You can be my captive. I'll be your captor. If you rap with me, I'm Velociraptor. Whew, gosh, worn out by that. Uh, well, now. Some people think that sharks are always very vicious, um, but here we are on S and, and we found out that they're very nice and they, they like to look after their children and, uh, and they can live to a great age. Um, so I brought along, well, here we are. I, I thought you'd like to see my shark, so here we are then, there he is. And, uh, right, so now we're in a mood for a shark, but this one's quite nice. The Shy Shark's Limerick. A shark known as Sean was so shy he circled our ship with a sigh. I don't want to crunch knees and noses for lunch, so I think I'll give Trifle a try. Hmm, I'm not sure it's going to be very good for him, but it'll certainly make a change. And uh, now, right, where are we? O P Q R S T. Ah, now. I've got one here that's a bit of a guessing game and one which is, uh, yeah, my little rant. So this one, I'm going, to, I'm going to give you a nice big clue at the end. So <laughs> it's called Who Am I? And it's one of those poems that's called a kenning. And they're very, it's a very old way to do it. The Vikings like kennings, so it's a puzzle. I'm a forest prowler, loud growler. Fierce fighter, mighty biter, prey catcher, victim snatcher, flesh muncher, bone cruncher, poor licker, tail flicker, shadow creeper, deep sleeper, water splatter, claw flasher, cub carer, stripe wearer, growing rarer, people scarer. And if you got it right, you'll know that tigers love to swim and it's really true. A lot of big cats and little cats too don't like water but tigers love it and uh, so that was the first one. So I hope, hope you got somewhere close and now this is me having a moan because I don't think all these people who found dinosaur bones got it quite right and everybody knows that the favourite one of all the children is T-Rex isn't it? It's got to be Tyrannosaurus Rex and you look at it and, and it's an amazing heavy fantastic creature and terrifying but what's all this with these funny little arms that they can't even scratch their nose if they've got an itch and um, so this is me being grumpy and it's the Tyrannosaurus Rex rant. Evolution, so they say, improves, corrects, refines. It doesn't ditch the good ideas and choose the bad designs. Now, take a look at old T-Rex. Can you spot the floor? Could it be the mighty legs, the gnashing, clashing jaw? Or could it be the weedy arms, too thin, too weak, too small, to scratch an itch or touch a toe, in fact, no use at all. I think some vital jigsaw bits have sadly gone astray. Massive bat-like finger bones that will turn up one day. We'll paint T-Rex with proper arms, hmm, the ones he used to grow. And when the expert wailed, Good grief, I'll shout, I told you so. I wonder if it might be feathers. I would love to find out that he, he had one of the first ones to have feathers. So here we are. A, B, C, D, F, G, H, K, right, right. Right, oh, 
You for unicorn. I, what else could we do? It has to be the unicorn. So this one is in a very different mood. Where is the unicorn? Where did he go? With his silver spike and his mane of snow. Deep in the secret world, hidden from day, he's only a whisper, a heartbeat away. Safe in a forest no hunter can find. But cover your eyes, keep watch in your mind, murmur a wish to the stars and the moon, and maybe you'll see him someday, very soon, with his silver spike and his mane of snow. Oh, where is the unicorn? Where did he go? Wow, wouldn't you love to find one? And now um, we're on to a great big vulture. <laughs> and I've just remembered that I, I forgot something earlier on because um, here we are, we've got here an ordinary hen's egg. And do you remember I, I did you a little poem about the ostrich? Yes. And um, down here, we have got an actual, that's a, a real proper ostrich egg and it's about the same size as um, uh, yeah, as sort of emus and things like that, all the big ones um, and people love to paint them so it doesn't come out looking like that, it comes out looking like an ordinary egg but it's all painted so these great big birds whoa, very often have their eggs painted so this is V is for vulture. A vulture who called herself Mary dressed up in pink like a fairy. She felt really sweet when she twiddled her feet, but sadly she looked a bit scary. And now we've got a good old friend from probably something that you've seen before. And uh, you can't describe a warthog, you've got to show one. So there he is, a nice big warthog. There he is, great big tusks. And um, well, I think you look nice. And um, here we go. So this is the warthog. You say I'm too lumpy, too bumpy and grumpy. My hair is too spiny, my, my, um, my tusks are too yellow and, and, and my voice is a bellow and my breath is too smelly and you laugh at my belly. Well, I don't need your pity. My mum thinks I'm pretty. Hmm. Where are we now? Aha. Oh. Right, this is the one that I thought would be worried, I would be worried about, but luckily along came a very helpful animal and it's the excellent X-ray fish. So where have we got to now? Yeah, we've got the U, the V, the W, the X-ray fish. The excellent X-ray fish just doesn't care if we count all her bones or we whisper and stare at her small beating heart or her see-through insides or her gills or her grin as she drifts on the tides so hooray for the x-ray fish an oddity yet she's helped me to finish my zoo alpha bet so yeah hooray what would we do without you thank you x-ray fish and now we have X, Y, Y. Okay, right, well, it, there's a wonderful, big, hairy sort of cattle. And uh, it's sort of bigger even than a bison and a buffalo. And yak! And it lives in very, very cold climates. Lots of snow, lots of ice. And on top of all of that, he's got mighty horns on his head. And, um, and often when you see pictures of them, they seem to be covered in a coat of snow. So... Here's the yak. Dear yak, you live in rocky lands without the help of boots or hands. You battle blizzard, snow and storm with only hair to keep you warm. You have no tent or comfy bed. You carry horns upon your head. Most people praise the tiger or the lion with his boastful roar. I think we've got one left, so there's someone over there. Or peacocks with their flashy feathers. But you survive the worst of weathers without a fuss or hug from Gran. So you're my hero. Signed, your fan. 
and I'm very, very proud of that yak. Um, never grizzles, he doesn't grumble. We're getting near the end, aren't we? There are at least three words I could have used. I could have had a zebu. Now a zebu is a little white cow, or at least the one that I saw. And uh, so it, when it was a little calf, it was quite dainty. It's a white, white cow, and it has a little lump on its head. And if it's a boy, it gets a huge lump on its head. And, uh, and then there's the zebra fish. But then, hey, let's have the zebra, of course. We all love the zebra. So here it is, the zebra. The zebra wears stripes where the weather is wet or windy, or cloudy, or sunny, and yet, when heat waves grow hotter and flies bite him lots, even the zebra will start to wear spots. And actually, we found out something re recently, didn't we? On I'm sure it was on the news and the television, um, that one of the reasons why the zebra has stripes is that in between, I think it's the white, the white ones, I think that's right, isn't it? The white ones um, get lots of little flies biting, but I think the black ones don't. Or it could be the other way around. <laughs> so here we are. It's almost the end of our stay at the zoo, but for goodness sake, we've got to go to the gift shop. Did you remember what I told you about the zebu? Well, the zebu is that little calf. And it's a, the one that I saw was all white and it was in the gift shop because I think he'd been, um, the, the lady at the till had been feeding him with a bottle. And uh, so here we are, this is a zebu, it's a little cow, and this is called the gift shop surprise, and it's the best, best thing I have ever, ever seen in any gift shop at any zoo, ever, ever. So here it is. There's a zebu in the gift shop. She's tiny and she's shy. She snuffled up beside me while I wondered what to buy. A box of bungee spiders on their long elastic strings, a shiny peacock feather, or a silver bird who sings. Three jolly frogs who bounce about on one small trampoline. A wind-up beetle with a key who shakes a tambourine. A pair of tiger trousers, they're ideal for climbing trees. A hippo made of velvet, or a squeaky snake to squeeze. But, oh, I really want that sea view, so can we keep her, please? I'm afraid not, because obviously she belongs to the zoo and her mum, and, uh, and, but I'm sure she had a very, very happy life. Thank you all for listening to me. I hope you enjoyed that. And uh, we're still living on this beautiful planet, Zoo. Did you enjoy that storyteller? Of course you did. And if you enjoyed it, like the minstrels of old, we're passing around the hat. And if you have some, Whether it's paper or coin, our storytellers would appreciate what you put in. Every penny you put in goes directly to that storyteller through paper. All you have to do is go to worldstorytellingcafe.com. Click on today's stories or click on that storyteller and there'll be a hat below the story. And you can just drop a little in that hat. Well, thank you for listening. And if you can afford it, we'd appreciate it.